Today we will get to know about David Ricardo. David Ricardo was born on April 1870-72, was a British political economist. He was one of the most influential classical economic thinker, along with Thomas Malthus, Adam Smith, and John Stuart Mill. Ricardo began his career as a broker and speculator in the financial market. He amassed great wealth through speculation. After retiring from trading, Ricardo entered politics and won a seat in the Parliament of the United Kingdom. Ten years after his retirement and four years after entering Parliament, Ricardo died of a middle ear infection that spread to the brain and caused septicemia. He died on September 11, 1823, at the age of 51. Ricardo is buried in the courtyard of St. Nicholas in Harden House. Wiltshire. David Ricardo has three masterpieces. The first entitled The High Price of the First Bullion, a proof of the depreciation of banknotes 1810. The second entitled An Essay on the Effect of Low Corn Prices on Stock Profits 1815. The third entitled On the Principles of Political Economic Education 1817. David Ricardo understood economic concept deeply through his practical experience in the capital market. This experience gave him valuable insight that influenced his theory. Ricardo agreed with the great economist Adam Smith that labor is essential in the economy. Ricardo developed further ideas about how capital plays a role in the economy. Ricardo developed the theory of the relative price of capital, which explained that capital not only increased labor productivity, but also speed up the production process. This means that goods can be produced and consumed faster. In his book, explained the basic principle of political economy, the concept of land rent, and discussed the advantage of international trade. Ricardo put forward several theories. Land rent theory. Soil types vary, some are fertile, less fertile or not fertile at all. To produce one unit of production costs are equivalent average cost and marginal cost, factors that determine the high and low land rents. Ricardo used a completely new analyze in economic discussions, namely the marginal analyze approach. Labor theory. A value Ricardo's most famous work is Principles of Political Economy and Decisions in 1880. 117. Ricardo expressed his touch on the theory of the value of labor. This theory explains first, both sectors have the same weak level and profit level. Second, capital used in production consists of focus only. Third, the production period has the same weight of our goods. Natural work theory. Ricardo explained that the exchange value of an item is determined by the costs that need to be incurred to produce the item because the cost of raw materials is relatively constant. Ricardo concludes that what most determines the price level is the natural work rate, which is only sufficient for survival. Money theory. This theory emphasizes that the value of money and economic stability depend greatly on the amount of money consumed in an economy, as well as on the relationship between money and commodity resources such as gold. Comparative expense theory of international trade. This concept is important in economic and was introduced by David Ricardo in the concept of international trade. This term is often used to reference to the benefit or profit of this from applying the participle of cooperative advance in turn. Ricardo's concepts are an integral part of classic economic theory and provide the basis of much modern economic theory. However, Ricardo struck them at the most importance of classic economic world, the theory of cooperative advance and the theory of value. The weakness of David Ricardo's theory are as follows. The law of diminishing returns states that when a resource such as land is used continuously with additional inputs, for example, labor or capital, the results obtained from each additional input will decrease as time. So this means that the more land is cultivated, the smaller the additional yield resulting from each increase in input will be. However, the weakness of Ricardo's theory is that he ignores the rule of technology. Technology can help increase productivity, so that initially technological advance can hold back or prevent this decline in results. 
For example, with the use of better tractors or fertilizers, agricultural yields can remain high, even though the land is already heavily used. However, if technological progress doesn't continue to develop or its influence decreases, then the law of decreasing returns will apply again and moves towards stationary equilibrium. There is a concept called stationary state. This is a condition in which the economy stops growing production, investment, and population growth stabilizes or stagnate. Ricardo's view, this stationary state situation occurs automatically after a period of economic growth. However, critics of Ricardo's view state that his understanding of the stationary state is wrong. Why? Because, in the reality, no economy reaches stationary so easily. For example, profits continue to increase. If profits continue to increase, companies will continue to invest, so the economy continues to grow. Increasing production. If production increase, it means that resource can still be optimized and the economy is still developing. Capital fertilization achieved. Capital fertilization is the process by which investments in capital, such as machinery, technology, and infrastructure, are continuously made. If this happens, the economy is not yet in a stationary condition because there is still development and growth. Critics state that the stationary conditions proposed by Ricardo were unrealistic. It is impossible for an economy to automatically stop developing as long as factors such as profits, production, and investment can still increase. Next, we will continue discussing the weakness of David Ricardo theory. Overly simplistic assumption about the relationship between population and wages. Ricardo argued that an increase in population doesn't always lower wages, but modern reality shows that rapid population growth can lead to wage inequality and pressure on natural resources. Depends on the assumption of a perfect free market. Ricardo believed that the economy would function optimally through perfect competition with, without much need for government intervention. However, in modern economies, regulation is often needed to prevent monopolies and excessive inequality. Limited theory on income distribution Ricardo theory focuses more on the distribution of income between laborers, landowners, and capitalists, but it provides less insight into the long-term aspect of economic growth and technological innovation. Limited view regarding product produced by land. Ricardo assumes that only one product, namely wheat, could be produced from land. However, in the modern era, land can produce a wide variety of products, and the agricultural sector is no longer the only important sector in the economy. This view is no longer relevant in the context of economic diversification. Soil also produces a variety of products other than wheat. Ricardo argued that for economic growth, only wheat can be produced from the soil. This is an outdated opinion because it turns out that soil can produce a variety of products other than wheat. Capital and labor are not fixed coefficients. Ricardo's assumption that capital and labor are fixed coefficients of production is incorrect. This assumption does not hold because labor and capital are independent variables. Ignoring the interest rate A serious weakness of Ricardo's theory is the neglect of the interest rate in economic growth. Ricardo did not consider the rate of interest as a service return separate from capital but include in profits. This erroneous opinion stems from Ricardo's inability to distinguish capital owners from entrepreneurs.